Hey, what's up, nerds? It's Paul here at Radio Free Hammer Hall. Today, I'm going to talk about Cities of Sigmar in 3rd Edition. So I wanted to wait on this one until after all of the FAQs dropped. In the initial FAQ, Hollow Heart actually lost its ability to give uh, wizards two spells, which seemed wrong, and we did find out in a later FAQ that it was indeed an error. So, uh, with that fixed now, it looks like we have our final set of FAQs for uh, you know the next six months or so, so we can actually take a look at this and see what we've really got. Um, things that we have here that are really important, there is definitely a decent amount of Ren 2 throughout the army, and there's a bunch of 3-up armor saves that are just a flat 3-up that you can improve to a 2-up with Mystic Shield, uh, All Out Defense, etc. Um, some cities were generally improved, some were hurt a little bit, but in general improved. Um, the change to the Endless Spell buff, um, this is an interesting one. Uh, all of the Endless Spell War Scrolls got changed, so they're no longer empowered by a realm. Now, instead, uh, we get plus one to cast uh, those Endless Spells instead of getting the empowered versions of them. So all in all, I mean, I think that's probably pretty good. All of the Endless Spells really did get... Uh, beefed up a bit, so we're getting better versions of them, and we get them easier to cast. So that's definitely a positive. We have a massive selection of units, allies, and coalition as we have had, um, and that just seems like every time there's a release, the list grows. Um, getting universal artifacts, prayers, and spells, that added a lot of flexibility. A lot of cities only have three artifacts and three spells, so having the ability to have some additional flexibility there is really good. Get some other really good options. Um, although all of our cities are tied to a realm specifically, it's no longer really relevant for gameplay. And that's definitely a positive. And as we all know, uh, we can ally in Gotrek, who has suddenly become one of the big bads in the metagame. So um, he's certainly one that's going to pop up in a lot of Cities of Sigmar lists. Just kind of going over the highlights of the cities quickly. Um... Hammerhall's command ability and other allegiance ability regarding uh, no battle shock, um, those are restricted to being in your opponent's ter territory and your territory, respectively. Most of the new battle plans, the territories are just the deployment zones, and there's a big no man's land where none of those abilities work. So Hammerhall definitely took a hit that's more from the GHB battle plans than it is from any other rules. Um, one of the other big boons that Hammer Hall really has is a lot of additional command points that they have access to. And with the additional command points that we get in 3rd edition, I feel like you might actually get overloaded with command points and not be able to spend them all. Um... One of the nice notes here is that we do have an artifact that gives you plus one save, so that can be very useful on uh, a number of your heroes to improve them to a three up or even two up. Um, so that one's definitely good. Living City. Uh, the hidden paths are definitely much more powerful now because of the board size being smaller. And Strike and Melt Away actually got stronger as well because a lot of units got the elite keyword and uh, a lot of units can use the reroll charge command ability uh, without having a hero nearby. So that definitely is very improved. Um, we get to take... Sylvaneth as Coalition, and Alariel, I think, might actually be a decent choice. Um, I've seen her in action, and she does pretty well, and I wonder what she might be able to do in a Living Cities army. 
Uh, also here, again, we have a command trait that gives you plus one save, so that is very useful as well. Greywater Fastness. Um, the Rune of all Unfaltering Aim and Salvo Fire, those both give you plus one to hit in the shooting phase, which, I mean, I think is comparatively less valuable uh, because you also have access to all-out attack. Um, if you're running really heavy into shooting, um, salvo fire and all-out attack can be used in the same turn, which, if you have more than one unit firing, that could be useful. And once again, Great Up Water Fastness also has an artifact that gives you plus one to save. Phoenicium, nothing really changing here. Um, it had one rogue uh, high finish recently, but overall the history of Cities of Sigmar Phoenicium has not really been a top choice, so there's not really much to talk about there. Anvil Guard, Drake Blood Curses. Uh, those definitely become more valuable now that we have monstrous rampages and our monsters in general are more valuable. Uh, the Drake Scale Cloak, that is an artifact gives you a 5-up ward save, so that with the Amulet of Destiny, you get two heroes with a 5-up ward, which is pretty good. Um, and Vitriolic Spray, that is the spell that reduces uh, an enemy uh, save value to zero, that is still extremely powerful and more powerful than ever because of all of the ways to buff your uh, save rolls. Hollow Heart. Um, the new Endless Spell restrictions and the new Endless Spell scrolls and change the Endless Spell Allegiance ability, I think all of that nets together to be a bit of a debuff for Hollow Heart. Um, you know, being restricted in total to three Endless Spells in a 2,000 point army and having to have one wizard per endless spell and all of the scrolls being different and endless spells generally being higher in points. Um, all of that put together, um, as well as getting only plus one to cast versus getting the empowered versions of endless spells, all of that definitely, I think, is hurting Hollow Heart compared to where it was at its peak. What is good with the new Endless Spell rules for Hollow Heart is that you can control your predatory Endless Spells, which was something that was a problem for Hollow Heart previously because they would be casting so many Endless Spells and um, be looking for uh, ways to control them, which were it became dangerous to cast too many predatory Endless Spells. So I think... Hollow Heart's a mixed bag, but I think in general it, at very least, is going to get used differently than it was before, and may just in general be worse than it was before. Uh, Tempest's Eye, there was not really any big changes here that made it stronger or weaker. It's still probably the best city choice. Um, there's not really anything, though, that was really overly fantastic that changes for them um i think because of all of their shooting that they tend to use and uh the addition of all out of attack that really gives them some additional firepower ability and don't necessarily have to rely on a celestial hurricane to get a plus one to hit so that's definitely a positive for them um yeah, they can also produce some command points, so there's uh, some ability to take advantage of that. Their command ability is strong and pairs well with being able to uh, command point run on a six, which you were able to do it before, but now we just have more command points to be able to do things like that. So I think overall Tempest Eye is still coming out strong. Mist Haven, that's another one that has a plus one to save artifact. Um, there is an ability to deep strike some units, um, 
it's a really narrow ability to begin with um, that I don't really think anybody was using. And um, the value of that, I think, is diminished because of the uh, shrunken board size. Um, you know, coming on in off the board edges, I think, is more valuable than it used to be. But the general deep strikes, I think, are not quite as strong. Uh, Harcuron, that lets you take Daughters of Cain as Coalition. That means you get Marathi and Bow Snakes in Coalition, which is really strong. You can still take Marathi and 10 Bow Snakes and fire those at your opponent. And it's some very strong shooting that you have access to. Uh, Harcuron also has Vitriolic Spray, as we talked about before in... Uh, Anvil Guard. It is the successor to Anvil Guard, so it has that same spell available. Definitely is very strong. You, you're going to probably want an Umbral Spell Portal to cast that through, but it's still really good. Uh, Settler's Gain. Um, we can take Coalition uh, Lumineth Realm Lords in Settler's Gain. So that gives us the ability to take Sentinels, which can bust through enemy armor at long range. Definitely very strong. Um, also, it has just generic buffs to your Collegiate Arcane casting, um, which is also pretty good. Uh, Excelsius, the Repost command ability is stronger now that we have better armor available that is reflecting mortal wounds back on a save of six. So... That's definitely pretty good, but um, I think there's other better city choices than Excelsis in general. So that's about it for all of the cities. Let's take a look at the actual units that we have going on here. Now, I'm not going to go through every single one because there is like over 50 war scrolls in this book, plus like four different armies of coalition plus another five armies of allies. So we're not going to play that game. Uh, we're just going to talk about the big highlights. So our general on Griffin and our dreadlord on black dragon, both of them have a net, a three up armor save. Both of them have the plus one built into them. They're four up on their scroll and then have plus one from carrying a shield. So a three up armor save is definitely really good, but any further armor saves are just going to negate rend. Uh, both of them have strong rend to attacks and they're both really good candidates for taking flaming weapon, uh, taking an artifact that gives them the ability to cast a spell and then making that spell flaming weapon. They both have um, a six attack profile on the, claws for both of them so adding on you know an extra damage onto a six attack stat line is pretty good um the steam tank commander that has a natural three up save so he can easily be made into a two up he heals on his own d3 in every hero phase and he's got decent bravery to also do heroic recovery so Steam Tank Commanders can be a really, really durable piece to get in your opponent's way and really tar pit them and force their way through. Rune Lords, um, they have a prayer that can give additional rend to dispossessed units. Um, very powerful on Iron Drakes, very powerful on Hammerers. Uh, they can also take from the Universal Spell Lore, so when they are not in range of those Iron Drakes or Hammerers, they could be um, healing, they could be blessing, they could be cursing, they could be doing a number of things, whichever prayer you decide to take, plus the Universal spare, uh, Prayer Lore that everybody gets. Um, and then the Anointed on Frostheart Phoenix or Flamespire Phoenix. Uh, they were super tanky before. They're even more tanky now that it's easy to give them plus one to save. Uh, the Anointed on Frostheart Phoenix, that is going to give you an aura of minus one to wound for your opponent. And the Flamespire Phoenix does mortal wounds when he flies over stuff. So both of them very good. One defensive, one offensive. 
I don't personally know how to choose between them. The Frost Heart seems to be the more popular choice, although I have heard some buzz about the Flame Spire. All right, and then into some of our units, Demigriff Knights and Drake Spawn Knights. They are both fast moving. They have a natural three up save on their war scroll, so that very easily goes to a two up. And they both have attacks that go to Ren 2 on the charge and do multiple damage. So those, I think, are very strong in the metagame right now with all of the armor that's flying around. Ren 2 is really good. And also, they just have a high normal save, so they're going to be able to tank really well. Free Guild Great Swords have a high volume of attacks and do mortal wounds on sixes. Their attacks also have rend, although it's only rend one. But all those attacks that they can get in are going to produce a lot of sixes. And mortal wounds are very powerful with, again, all of the armor that is going to be hanging around. Phoenix Guard, speaking of armor, they just got even tankier now that they can get easy access to a plus one to save. That would put them on a three up, four up. And need I remind you that Gotrek is a four up, three up. So you're looking at save stacks that are comparable to uh, what Gotrek has to offer. And then you back that up with an Emerald Life Swarm and that unit of Phoenix Guard is going nowhere fast. Iron Drakes and Hammerers, I already mentioned before. Both of them can go to Rend 2 with a Rune Lord. Iron Drakes are your shooty version. Hammerers are your melee version. They're both really good choices. I think uh, we're going to be seeing a lot of those out of Cities of Sigmar armies um, in general. Um, also, in the Dispossessed category, Iron Breakers. They're a battle line unit that has a base three up save. And again, that can easily become a two up save. So those are very strong. They're not incredibly expensive. They're, I believe, throwing two attacks each so they can fight back a little bit. And overall, they are pretty strong. I think uh, Cities of Sigmar is definitely having some positive moves here in third edition. So I think the big key points to hit home here are that we have more units and heroes that have become viable. The stuff that was good before is still good, by and large. Um, you've got access to Gotrek at all times, and then in Harkuron, you get access to Marathi as well. So you can run a Gotrek Marathi list in Cities of Sigmar, which is needless to say very powerful um soul scream bridge we get to cast on plus one all the time uh so being able to bridge iron drakes across the board that have been buffed up by a rune lord blazing away with uh two attacks each on threes and threes rend two one damage is pretty good um iron drakes are definitely really powerful right now um, Hallow Heart isn't as abusive as it used to be, but I think it's still good. It may be a decent option if you're just looking to have above average wizards, and it does have some other good abilities to it and some good spells. So I think it's not really this abusive build around thing anymore. But it is, I think, a strong choice for having a good all-comers sort of army that just has better wizards. Tempest Psy is still probably your best competitive choice. It is still really good. It only got better, I think, with uh, the addition of more command point options. So definitely one to look at for your lists going forward. Um, you can really easily overall build lists with very high armor and high rend and mortal wound output. And those are three things that you definitely need in third edition. Those are very important uh, factors to have in your list. And in addition to that, we have some good hero monster selections. We have the Dreadlord on Black Dragon. We have the free guild general on griffin we have the two phoenixes we have the sorceress on black dragon we have the battle mage on griffin so 
And then we also have the Charybdis and the War Hydra. Although they're not super powerful, they do get monstrous rampages. If you're in Anvil Guard, they'll get their um, Drake Blood Curses to do even more damage. And overall, I mean, they're not that expensive. They're 165 and 170 for those. So I think you might be able to pull off some decent utility with those if they're something that you like. Um, that I don't know if they're necessarily going to be like the top meta choice, but they're definitely something that like if you're really into your War Hydras and Charybdises, uh, I think you're going to be able to get some decent use out of them. So that is it for now, guys. If I missed anything, feel free to leave a comment in the description down below. If I got anything wrong, of course, leave a comment down below. I love to know when I'm wrong. It's great for the YouTube algorithm. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, hit that notification bell to find out when our newest videos are coming out. If you'd like to support the channel, we'd greatly appreciate you visiting our Patreon and contributing there. And you can also join us over on Facebook and Twitter. All of the links down below in the description. That's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later.